G'day, welcome back to Fatty Margins. Well, the wind's still blowing outside and it's still raining and uh, has been every day since I got back from America. Um, but we're warm and dry inside, we're fed, me and the dog. Fire's lit, there's a cup of tea over there when I finish talking to you guys. Life is good. I thought it was about time we had another little fireside ramble. Tell you another story about another one of my uh, slip joint folders. And this one I've called my therapy knife. Now you may think to yourself, well, why does he need a therapy knife? What is a therapy knife? It's not like a therapy dog, except it doesn't bark. Well, kind of. It is a bit like that. As most of you know who follow my channel, and if you don't, you can go back and uh, view the, the earlier content. I spent a couple of months recently with my wife touring around the United States, the, the Western states. So from uh, Minnesota through South Dakota, Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, uh, Utah, um, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and back through South Dakota. Met up with some friends, consolidated some friendships, um, was treated with huge hospitality, um, uh, and uh, I am so grateful to all those people. Uh, love you all. So, you know, whatever people, anybody says, America is a great country and it is full of very fine people. Uh, and I met more than my fair share. While I was over there, of course, the rules are different. So instead of being limited to a, uh, a slip joint folder, I was able to carry uh, a buck 110, the first of which I was gifted by Mo, thanks again, mate, um, from uh, Kirby Creek Outfits. And then a little later, after I'd been to the Buck Knife Factory, I got a drop point, I carried that for a little while. I was gifted some, some beautiful knives um, from uh, various friends of mine, uh, some of which I carried and, some, and one of which I, can't, I haven't been able to carry because I have to make a sheath for it. Uh, and that is something to behold, that one. Anyway, um, the laws are different. And so I was at liberty to carry a fixed blade on my belt which is something I've never done, except if I was going out, say, camping or doing a bushcraft thing or something like that. Uh, but you could put it on, I could put it on my belt in the morning, go out, get in the car, drive around, go see stuff, and nobody bat an eyelid. It was wonderful. And uh, so I want to show you, this is the first fixed blade that I carried as an EDC. And this is the um, 113, a buck 113 Skinner in S30V with blue wood scales. I bought it, it was um, a custom, it's made by the custom shop. Bought it at the factory. I don't know why they had extra ones of these uh, behind the counter, but they did. Uh, so I got a very good price, I was very pleased with this. And I wore this uh, for a few days. Um, and then I went back to carry my 110. And the other knife I carried, uh, much later, somewhat later, was this one. This was gifted to me by a very dear friend of mine, he absolutely took, uh, took my breath away. It was like, no, you, you can't be serious. Stop larking about. And he said, no. I said, no, 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 you can't do that. And he said, oh, yes, yes. Uh, this is a Bark River Matterhorn. And I just love this thing. A2, A2 steel, Mercada handle, like a sort of snake print Mercada handle. It is just beautiful. And it is just so mountain man. Uh, it just delights me. I carried this for maybe, I think, a fortnight towards the end of the trip. Um, couldn't bring myself to carry anything else. Once you start, you get hooked. Uh, and I knew that I would have trouble adjusting uh, coming back here to Great Britain. Uh, so I started to wean myself off it. I, I, I put this away and I started wearing the 110 and then I started to wear my, um, my Swiss Champ uh, on its own and carried nothing else. Um, and then when I came back, I thought, well, okay, I'm back now, back in the land of the slip joints, and that's fine, I love slip joints, right? And I thought, well, how's this gonna play out? How do I stop myself becoming a grumpy old git whinging about the, the, the draconian laws here in the UK? And um, so I was rummaging through my little bag of, of, of folders, and I settled on this one. This was, it wasn't the first one I carried, but I've been carrying this now for a good two weeks. And this is an Arthur Wright and Sons Barlow in Buffalo Horn. 
And I want to tell you why I settled on this one. The first reason is that a Barlow is a British design. Right? I know it went native in America. Uh, it's an American d adopted pattern. I know that it, it was um, Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn had one. All right? But notwithstanding, these started off in Sheffield in I think the 16th century, this pattern. So, it's, so, it, so it carries with it a lineage. It is rooted in this country, in the same way as I'm rooted in this country. You know, I, I was, I'm born and bred here, even though I sound as though I'm from somewhere else, which in one sense I am. It's not as big a blade as I could carry. It's probably two and a quarter, I, I would think, cutting edge, not much more than that. But it, it, it has resonances right, that make me appreciate where I live. So it has resonances because, because the pattern comes from here. It has resonances because it reminds me of, of tired old men cutting their onion and bread before they go back out to work in the fields. It reminds me of um, a chap I met the other week when I went pheasant, pheasant beating and uh, who, who pulled out, it wasn't one of these, but he pulled a knife out of his pocket straight away because I, I needed a wand for being the thing, and before I could get mine out from underneath all my layers, he had his out of his pocket, and he just cut off a hazel wand, and trimmed it up, and said, there you go. Reminds me of walking in narrow lanes with hedges and going up both sides. Reminds me of rabbits running out from the side, of pheasants flying off into the hedge. Reminds me of walking up bare hills like in the Lake District, and finding little you know, coppices of wood. Reminds me of hazel wands. Reminds me of badger and mole and wind in the willows. It reminds me of all those things. It even reminds me of the British Museum, that great receptacle, that great crucible of, of our civilization. Crucible is probably the wrong word, but never mind, you know what I'm saying. Uh, Reminds me of all those things. And so it makes me appreciate where I live. It makes me appreciate this country for all its fault. And Lord know they're legion. Um, simply because I can look at it and I can handle it and I can use it. And um, that's it really. So it's a funny story. It's a, fu a funny little confession, I guess. So that's why this little Barlow is my therapy knife. Um, because it helped me to adjust from the great sweeping liberty that I was given uh, visiting the United States back to the more modest um, and more controlled environment in which I find myself living. So that's it guys. Um, I hope you find this mildly entertaining. Uh, there's more stuff in store, more reviews. Um, I've, even, I've even filmed the, B, the BK9 and uh, uh, Hudson Bay review um, so uh, that'll be coming out uh, this Sunday, I think. Um, I, I've already set it up to go, so I hope you look forward to that. In the meantime, until we uh, meet again, this is Steve from Fading Margins, wishing you all health and happiness and every blessing. And uh, I'll catch you soon. You take it easy now. Bye-bye.